it's Melissa and welcome back to my channel. I'm back today to create another layout for the Hip Kit Club and this layout is for Main Kit Thursday and um, basically we can use the Main Kit only and we can also use the Cardstock Kit and my assignment for this layout is to use a dark background so what I've done is I've gone into the Cardstock Kit and pulled out the darkest um, piece of Cardstock which is this beautiful dark navy piece um i think it must be no it's not basil i'm not sure it may be american crafts um so it's textured on both sides but more so on this side and i think i'm going to use this side and then also what i've pulled um is the next sort of darkest paper was this one from uh, crepe papers fresh bouquet called roses or wild rose actually wild rose i'm reading the wrong line um this is beautiful and um, yeah um, I've also fussy cut some of this and you'll see that soon and I've also pulled this gorgeous piece it's from Amy Tangerine's late afternoon collection and I really want to use this side I think it's lovely and I've done some fussy cutting I'll just show you um, I just did this in front of the TV of three of the papers so the ones I have used are this one from Cozy Days called Warm Hearts so I've fussy cut these and used them on my first layer I made with this kit as well. Of course, I've forgotten to tell you the name of the kit. <laughs> the month of the kit is the October 2020 kit. Um, and I've also fussy cut uh, this, the, some of the leaves, bigger leaves, a couple of smaller leaves off this paper from Cozy Days called Harvest Wishes. So that's the other side of that beautiful scripty font. And then, um, like I said, did I just show you that? No, I did. Um, yeah, some of this from uh, the Crepe Paper Fresh Bouquet. So um, the reason I've got two is because I have got the pattern paper add-on as well, which is identical to the papers in the main kit. So um, what I'm thinking of doing is I've seen a lot of layouts lately that have a wreath, but, and, but the wreath is sort of, it has a circle and all the bits of the wreath come out from under the circle. I'm not sure. I mean, that's my interpretation of it. I'm wanting to create that. I've seen a lot of people do it on white cardstock with a white circle in the middle. I'm wanting to use this beautiful maroon coloured paper for my circle. Um, I'm not using my silhouette for this. I'm wanting to show you how you can make a circle um, just with a, a plate. This is a side plate. And all I'm going to do is trace around it on the reverse side of this and then just fussy cut it out. So you don't need to have a manual die cutting machine or a silhouette or a Cricut or any, um, you know, cutting machine. You can do it yourself. So that is my intention. So let's get started. Okay, so the first thing I did was turn that paper over and trace around the side plate. And the reason that I turned it over was so that when I come to fussy cutting like I am now it doesn't matter if my cutting isn't perfect and this just ensures that I won't end up with any pen on the actual side that I want so I didn't I wasn't perfect with this um you know it's never going to be perfect unless you're using some kind of circular cutter or a die cut machine um I don't want it perfect and I actually distress the edge of it anyway so even if it was you know slightly off um it would be totally fine so then i took it over to my sewing machine and i stitched around it um like i say perfection's not my thing this isn't perfect either i did have to um trim i don't know what happened with my thread but it kind of pulled a bit at the back so i just used some washi tape to hold down all the extra threads it's something to do with the tension and i'll need to have another look at it so here I'm using some Liquitex acrylic ink just to add something to this background. This background is very dark, obviously that is the challenge, but I just um, wanted a little something in the background and it's very subtle um, and you'll see as, as this layout progresses. So while that's drying, um, acrylic ink does take a little bit to dry. Sometimes I will dry it off with my heat gun, but I don't want to do that too much because it can bubble as it dries. So these are my photos. Um, if you saw my last layout that I made with this kit, um, I did a photo of my three girls playing in some leaves during autumn. That was our lockdown. So that would have been, I think this was in May. So coming sort of into the end of our lockdown and into the end of autumn. And then um, 
I just, yeah, these are photos of Brielle, that's what I'm trying to say, so our six-year-old, and they're really cute, they are of her throwing some leaves in the air, or lifting the leaves up and then throwing them in the air. So I've printed them quite small because I didn't want them to, um, I didn't want to, I wanted to use two photos, and I didn't want the layout to be dominated by the photos. Sometimes um, I really want the photos to shine. I always want the photos to shine, but in this instance, I do want the wreath that I make to shine as well. So I've just cut apart two of the tags from that Simple Stories Cozy Days cut apart, and I've chosen colours that work with the photos. So quite a um, subtle plaid on that one on the left, and then I've used the green topped tag for the other photo. And then I just needed something, just a little little pop of colour. So I've chosen this white and yellow or sort of mustardy yellow gingham pattern, which is really lovely when you just get a hint of it poking out from the side of the photos. So that just provides a bit of a border because those tags are white. Uh, one's got, I think, grid pattern and one's just plain so it just needed a little something else. I did think about adding foam behind these um, matted photos but I will add the foam behind the tags and you'll see that soon. So I've just taken some black and white twine from my stash. I'm aware that I'm running out, I'm going to have to order some more soon because I just love how versatile having black and white, twi black and white twine in your stash can be. So at this point I'm realising that I do need to lift up this circle because that will enable me to tuck things underneath and I think um, I was contemplating whether I glue this down or um, you know and tuck things underneath or just position it and still tuck things underneath but not glue it. So you'll see that I decide to glue it and always my first step in gluing down this foam is to put some double sided tape down first. Um, I was just checking there to see if that Liquitex is dry. It's a little bit damp, but I'm not bothered by it. So here I was thinking I could just lay it down and then tuck these florals under it. Um, I'm also wanting to add some of those pebbles, the Avenue, I think they're ephemera pieces, and also some of the chipboard from Cozy Days. So originally I thought that I would position those ephemera pieces and chipboard underneath and tucking out the wreath as well but as I get going you'll see that I decide to just have the wreath with the fussy cut flowers. So here I've decided to adhere that circle and as always I've, I think I was trying to tell you before I use double sided tape and then I use liquid adhesive. So just tucking things under now, lifting them up slightly, not adding any dimension behind these bits at the moment, but I will do that soon. I just wanted to um, make sure that I am positioning these as I want them and a little bit spaced out. I didn't realise it was going to be so pink flower dominated, but of course it is because two of the papers have got a lot of pink flowers on them. And actually I love how they look because they look lovely with the dark background and then that maroon Amy Tangerine paper. So now I've got these little dimensional adhesives and I'm just lifting up my florals and um, popping a little pop dot behind. And that just gives a little bit of shadow. Um, I'd say movement, but I don't know possibly some movement or to look like this movement if that makes sense but one thing I just never do except if I'm in a traveler's notebook is create a flat page so really getting into it now I think oh yeah, I've sped this up quite a lot so that you don't have to watch all of it but you'll see that I don't wait till the end to adhere everything I just make a decision and I go with it so I get to this point and I realize I've got a couple of gaps and I need to fussy cut out a couple more of these flowers and I've gone with ones that don't have any leaves that need to be cut First of all, because I think um, once I come and add the other leaves on, there's going to be enough leaves, and also because I can't be bothered <laughs> fussy cutting out any more with leaves. So, honest honest with you again in this video. Um, yeah. So, I'm um, loving how this is starting to come together. Um, yeah, fussy cutting a couple more or one more of those smaller flowers of the crepe paper paper as well. And at the moment, it's looking... Um, it's not messy enough for me, so that's where all these extra bits and pieces come in. I took the time to fussy cut out some of those blue leaves off the crepe paper paper. Yes, it was fiddly, but it's definitely worth it in the end, especially when I look at the finished layout. 
So I've also got those other kind of brown orange leaves. They're also off that crepe paper piece of paper. And I think as these leaves and things, as they get closer to the center of that paper, the um, size of the leaves gets bigger. So I think I've got a couple of sizes that I've fussy cut. And same with those blue leaves as well. I've also got those cozy day leaves that I've cut. Um, what would they be? They're like an oak leaf or I would say maple, but they're probably more likely to be an oak leaf and they look lovely. And as you can see now, it's really starting to come together and at this point I was so happy because my idea had worked. I wasn't sure how this would look. Um, sometimes I get vision in my head and it doesn't always work out when I actually come to make the layout. So I'm using this little um, border strip. I just adhered it with liquid adhesive and trimmed off the edges. It's gold and it's really pretty and I love how it looks. Now these um, pebbles, the Avenue Collection, these ephemera pieces are very different to the Cozy Days pieces. They are more whimsical and there's a few like people in them, there's animals as you can see. So I really wanted to tie these in because Brielle is only six and she's really cute and she'd love all these little critters and animals. On her page so that's why I've added them in. I've put some foam on the back of these tags like I mentioned that I was going to do and I did think about using two pieces of foam and a foam under um, the, the side of the tag that's close that overlaps the other tag. I thought about lifting it up even more but in the end I thought it would be a bit much because I've already got a lot of dimension going on. This little guy is really, really cute. Now, we don't have animals like this in New Zealand, but it didn't bother me. I just think it works with the layout. It works with the theme of the page, which is autumn, and it's just adorable, and I know she'll love that on her page. I'm also using a couple of these trees. I just love the whimsy feel of these um, ephemera pieces. I'm using some liquid adhesive and also some dimensional adhesive just to bring that red orange tree in front of the more wood grain one and like I said I don't like flat pages so just going through the chipboard now I love the simple stories chipboard I'm going with that little acorn at the bottom of um, that right sided tag I forgot to say that I um, so with these pebbles ephemera pieces they are attached like you'll get three in a row or two in a row they're perforated and I just prefer to cut them apart and so with that butterfly it was kind of uneven when it was cut apart so I've just trimmed out some of the white edging it's not perfect and I just love how it looks at the top of that tag I'm adding this give thanks chipboard piece I think it works really well goes with the theme um, we were really grateful actually because this is a new park that has, um, basically our council bought some public land that was being sold. Um, I shouldn't say public land, it was private land actually. It was a person's house and property. The council bought it and have turned it into a reserve and it's really lovely, especially in autumn. So here I'm just um, deciding to tie these bits of twine into a bow. So as always my technique is to turn my page upside down so I tie my bow upside down and then the tails of the bow go down and here I was thrilled to be able to get this banner piece used up um, I don't think I've adhered it yet I'm still thinking about it but I love the look of banners but I do find them hard to use so I was really really thrilled to be able to get it onto this layout now I had thought about my title beforehand I really wanted to use one of these puffy titles from pebbles and what does it say so much happy and that really describes Brielle if you've watched my videos for a long time or followed me for a long time you'll know that I often mention how happy she is she's one of those children that's always smiling except when she's unhappy which is like very rarely really so yeah I love how that looks I love that it's all lowercase and then I added that puffy heart because I just felt I needed something else because that title is so small I needed something to draw the eye to it then I adhered that banner I've used liquid adhesive as well I just think that the um, simple stories chipboard definitely need that so my final touch is to use my favorite Lindy's Gang Magical and I think it's called Golden Sleigh Bells. So yeah, that is my layout. I hope you enjoyed my process. I'm thrilled with how this one turned out and I'll be back again next week with another video. Take care. Mm -hmm.